Don't mind the science guy song stuck in my head right now. Bill, Bill, Bill. And with that, welcome everyone. Uh, uh, if you have the Bill Nye Science Guy theme stuck in your head too, then congratulations, you are now watching our stream. Uh, welcome everyone to Ages of Ainur. Uh This is uh, the Beast Wilds. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, my phone is silenced. Chat is up. I think I have a billion and a half windows open. Um, we are playing Dungeons and Dragons t tonight. Uh, this is episode three of the Beast Wilds: The Way Forward. Uh, I will be your humble DM GM tonight, uh, and with us our four misfits, uh, who will now introduce themselves in clockwise order. Take it away, bonus dad. Ah, okay. Um, I am known as Bonus Dad. And uh, otherwise known as Charlie M. <clears throat> and I'm playing a, a, a high elf, uh, what am I, high elf rogue named Carrick Nailo, uh, short for, I mean, uh, known as, uh, uh, as Nail. And this slick, sneaky, and stealthy like any rogue. And handsome to boot. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All tall, right. Tall, slender, and well dressed. <laughs> and we we look forward to seeing his next outfit. All right. Up next, uh, Ace. Please introduce yourself and your character. Yeah, I'm Ace. I'm one of the DMs around the Bonus Bomb Tavern Discord. Uh, tonight, I'm playing Apollo, the Hobgoblin Ranger, who's been a bit of a loner, but has found himself in this group of misfits. Yeah, let's let's see how much his uh, 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 social uh, avoidance uh, gets worn down by our pesky friends here. Uh, one of those up next is Synovia. Please introduce yourself and your character. Hi, I'm Synovia. I'm the same height as Megan Thee Stallion, and I play Catalina. Wow, incredible! Uh, is uh, and how tall is Catalina? Catalina is six seven. I am five nine. Oh, that's that's a stretch, but I hear they have surgery for that. Moving on, <laughs> we have last but not least, Pixel. Please introduce yourself and your character. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's me, Pixel. Hi, uh, I am the same height as Tom Cruise, Emilio Estevez, Spike Lee, Michael J. Fox, Martin Sheen, Lenny Kravitz, Al Pacino, Mike Myers, and Steven Spielberg. Short Kings Unite. You can find me on the internet at um, here running Ages of Minor Games. We should have our um, Curse of Strahd uh, episode later this week on Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. You can also find me on twitch.tv slash Hammer and Pixel, where I've been playing Baldur's Gate and Stardew Valley. So uh, tonight I will be playing. Um, uh, oh gosh, Everard Elder Tingle. I knew it was an E. What am I doing here? Everard Elder Tingle. <laughs> Emilio <Halfling> Estevez. <laughs> yeah, that's real. Honestly, that was what was in my head. <laughs> you played yourself. Uh, I did. I played myself. Uh, tonight I will be playing myself and Everard <laughs> Elder Tingle. Um, so, you know, just good luck figuring out what is me and what is him. Okay, and now as all of you struggle to comprehend uh, what is or is not reality, uh, I'd like you all to take inspiration if you don't have it already. Uh, so, uh, housekeeping for the stream. Uh, rule number one, don't be a turd. That's the only rule. Uh, that goes to audience members who are watching and to the folks on stream. Uh, now, oh no. uh, housekeeping... My plans have been ruined. <laughs> don't, don't make me flush you. Uh... It's illegal in Ohio. For, <laughs> for housekeeping uh, of the stream, uh, we did forget to roll our travel die at the end of session two, our last session. Uh, and given that, uh, hey there, Pick, uh, given that uh, it was a tough drive through the muddy rain, uh, that travel die is going to be a D6. Um, now, who rolled the first one was that everard or pixel i can't i don't remember i don't remember either i don't remember who rolled the first one i uh, thought you did i'm not gonna lie i don't 
think I did. But uh, who would like to roll this travel die to see how many days we've been on the road? Uh, the last and the first and only travel die that we have rolled thus far has been a two. Uh, so whatever you roll will be added to that for your total days on the road. Well, first of all, you might want to explain to us what die are we rolling and what it means exactly. <laughs> yes, you are rolling a D6. <clears throat> uh, for this campaign, we have a delivery deadline. Our four misfits are have joined the Postman, a voluntary organization of couriers who travel the post roads, uh, a uh, interconnected uh, network of, of roads, across the beast wilds which are maintained uh, as safe traveling roads for the general populace by the postman uh and uh we have left jaffroon city in the far southeast of the uh of of the beast wilds uh the jaffroon city post uh and we have been traveling uh, north we've hit the crick this massive marshland uh that is ever shifting uh and nearly impossible to navigate uh and we have uh struck towards the coast through the season of storms first storm the torrential hailing in the holler uh the rain monsoon rainy seasons in this part of the world uh, and we have gotten onto the ferry where a couple of dodgy ferrymen who may be pirates have led our folks out to... Uh, let's not forget we invented a national sport along the way. Okay, That's true. Just... Uh, the mudsled. The mudsledding uh, 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 circuit is open and during the rainy season is going to be all that anyone wants to do for fun. So uh, if you have to backtrack, look out because they be a sledding. Uh, so these, this travel die, uh, we roll at the end of every session to represent the number of days uh, that our team has been on the road. They have one month to make a uh, delivery of two ironbound chests of magical items far to the northwest of the Beast Wilds, uh, and they have been on the road for a uh, confirmed two days so far. Uh, so you will be rolling a d6. Uh, whoever would like to be our roller. Well, why don't we just starting now go in like the clockwise order like we do intros and start sure. with bonus dad and then just go on bonus from there. Bonus dad. Okay. Give us a That's d6. A, yeah, one suggestion anyway. What have we got? A four? Oh, you're a uh, muted bonus dad. But I saw your fingers, and I can count. Yeah. <laughs> that's a four. four. That's, a, that's a four. All right. So we got four <laughs> more days on the board. Uh, that is the number of days that uh, y'all traveled last session. So we are currently up to six confirmed days. That is one-sixth of your total travel time currently elapsed. Yikes. So... Uh, would anyone like to recap? Uh, well, no, I did a good enough recap. If you want to know what happened in last week's or uh, last session two weeks ago, uh, go to YouTube and check it out. It's up on the Ages of Einor YouTube channel. Now, where we left off, our heroes were shuffled onto the ferry that bypasses the Crick in order to continue their journey. Now, Meatbone and Squeefa, the two dodgy ferrymen, uh, contractors, uh, have rowed your ferry barge out of the rain into deeper water, where, dancing on the waves, you saw pinpricks of light, uh, which were lanterns lighting up the, the infamous pirate ship, the flagship of the Bart Company, uh, the pirate organization which trolls the waters of the Beast Wilds. None other than the Salty Squirter. Uh, you can smell the Salty Squirter well before you can really make out the shadows. 
because it's lit by fish oil burning lanterns. The chimney smokestack, which powers this magnificent uh, piece of technology, uh, usually burns some form of fossil fuel in order to rotate the two paddle spinners, which give this ship the ability to navigate the beast wilds without uh, relying on wind. Uh, it's made it an absolute terror in these waters, as you all have heard through rumor and news. However, you, you notice that this ship is fully anchored uh, and that the smokestack in the center uh, is now sort of belching this dense, briny smog. And you, that's that smell, that fishy smell. It seems as though the central engine facility of the vessel has been converted into this kind of fish oil refinery uh, in an effort to keep them all with some source of light in the shadowed skies. Um, not that that engine would do them much good anyway if they have no ability to navigate by starlight. And so you approach this vessel, uh, all of you on the barge, uh, the waves gently sort of tossing you and bumping you up against the ship as ropes are thrown over, uh, ahoys are given uh, between Meatbone and Squeefa and the crew on deck. Um, and uh, Meatbone, your ferryman, uh, uh, turns to, to speak to you all. <laughs> well, d don't worry. It, it sounds like Captain's asleep, so it's sleeping hours. That means you guys stay here. When he's up and ready, he's going to come and say hello. Uh, greet all of you to give you a warm welcome. <laughs> So, why don't you all bunk down here for the night in your little wagon, and uh, we'll catch you up uh, whenever the boss wakes up. He grabs the uh, enormous meat cleaver uh, from under the tarp in the corner, slings it onto his back, climbs, scurries up uh, in, onto the boat, uh, and Squeefa likewise follows. And you are left for an amount of time uh, that you feel you could probably comfortably sleep. Uh, you could uh, talk amongst yourselves. Uh, you could uh, discuss any edits to the letter that Apollo is supposed to deliver to uh, the contractor, Salagushio Bart. Uh, tell me what happens as you are left to your own devices on the ferry barge. Well, we think we have a few suggestions about that missive that uh, we have come into possession of. And um, I think Everard maybe has some ideas about that, don't you? You want to tell us what you thought? Um, yeah, so, uh, we kind of, uh, obviously we can't, you know, edit it too heavily, um, because then it's more likely that, that what we do will get caught. So what I was thinking is, um, maybe we can find a way to sort of, um, just cause some trouble and some chaos between, uh, Captain Soggy Boots and this is a fairy guy. Uh, I don't really know a lot about him, um, but uh, what I what I was thinking maybe we could do is basically to uh, make it seem like that Zafriri was writing two different letters to two different people and mix them up and put them in the wrong envelopes and make it seem like this is actually a secret letter to um, a, a sort of a, a mistress or other, you know. Uh, person that he's romantically involved with um, to sort of, you know, make Soggy Boots mad at him and also make it maybe seem like he's planning to supplant Soggy Boots with someone else and make them the uh, head of the, the post the postmaster general um, <clears throat> and also that he's taking credit for Soggy Boots' idea. So it's sort of like a with, with a few minor edits, I think we can do a lot of um, 
you know, cause a lot of problems here. Um, with basically just swapping out, you know, some of the epithets a little bit. But the, but the person I had in mind, there's this other uh, pirate I've heard about that, um, well, apparently uh, she's vaguely associated with Captain Soggy Boots and also a pirate. So a lot of the, like, water imagery would, would, would fit. We wouldn't have to change the, like, you know... It, your damp loot and all that stuff that's in the letter. We wouldn't have to change that because it's also a pirate, right? Um, just sort of like minimize what all we have to change. Um, and then it, it basically causes uh, the pirates would start fighting each other and, you know, Soggy Boots would be mad at Zafriri. And then during all the chaos, we could just like pick someone else completely and announce that they're <clears throat> the Postmaster General with the certified, you know... Uh, with the certified writ or whatever it is, we just like snip that off the bottom and take it ourselves and, you know, pick someone else. But meanwhile, yeah. they're not looking for us because there's all this chaos between, you know, Zafiri and Soggy Boots and this Sabine lady. That makes sense. Uh, that sounds like a great idea to me. Serena uh, pipes up. Sabine, you be saying. Sabine, the gold death. No, but she's one of the Bard Company pirates herself, isn't she? I've heard terrifying stories. Right. So, I mean, but if she's one of the Bard Company pirates, then, you know, listen, if they're fighting each other, they're probably not bothering us, right? That's right. It is a wise I mean proposal. You know, if she ever finds out we did this, that's probably a problem. But, you know, I don't know. Later. I can't fix everything. <laughs> um, I, wanna, I know that Catalina does not have proficiency in calligraphy skills. Um, but I want to know if she does know enough that she knows that you can scrape ink off of vellum because it's leather. Yeah, I think... I think you could know that uh, as as someone uh, who is used to working with leather. I think uh, that both Catalina and probably even Apollo would have an understanding of how to do that. Mm. I think Catalina's just kind of like, if well, you have a sharp enough knife, you can just flake the ink off a little bit and then write whatever you want in that spot. Yeah, and I actually am proficient in calligrapher supplies too, apparently. Nice. So. And um, Nail collected glitter from the statue uh, that Scobie Yemnimson was was uh, perched upon. Uh, and I think that with Ace's uh, golden pine sap. Uh, combining that with the glitter would make a replica gold ink. So I'm going to say you guys have everything you need to do the edits uh, and including the time to do it. Well, with that, I think I would pull, uh, pull the stuff out of my bag and lay it out for those who are more able than I to forge such a thing, but you know, I'll definitely help facilitate in whatever fashion I can. All right. All right. And uh, everyone's cool with the, I, I, you know, for folks who are watching at home prior to game, I had posted a potential edit that uh, bonus dad and I sort of came up with. Is everybody cool with the edits that we made there? Yeah, I think yeah, so. I'm, yeah. I'm cool with it. Although I think we should omit the part where the writ actually is. I had edited that as well, but I don't think we need to because our plan is not to actually nominate Sabine to that position, but to pick someone else in the in the sort of chaos. But, yeah. Okay. So basically, um, just cut the last sentence is what we're thinking. Well, yeah. So I'm thinking after your lovers of Freery, we just cut that whole part of it off and take it with us. So. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So just and then the later on, when we pick who we want to be the postmaster general, while Zafriri and Soggy Boots and Sabine are all, you know, fighting out that whole problem, we can just swoop in and announce, "Oh, hey, by the way, we have this writ, and this is the new postmaster general." You know. Yeah. But since we don't have somebody picked right now, we might as well kind of sure just hang on to it. Okay, cool. All right. Well, tell me what I got to do. 
I mean, I assume it's a calligrapher supplies check. Yeah, so um, uh, I think what I'm going to do uh, is, since everyone's in on this, I'm going to make it a skill challenge. Oh. Um, it sounds like what we're doing is uh, bonus dead and ace. Uh, Nail and Apollo are going to attempt to make the ink. Uh, so if each of you would like to roll a skill check to that effect, whether it's, you know, sleight of hands for steady hands, uh, nature for the interaction, or medicine, something like that. Um, and uh, Catalina, you'll be uh, removing or making space <laughs> on the scroll. Um, so let me know what skill you choose for that, and Everard is going to be applying the edits. So that'll be a calligrapher's <clears throat> tool check, right? So uh, I think in order to... Uh, what, what we'll say is uh, every success that you guys get will lead to the authenticity of this document. With four successes, it will be irrefutable that this is a perfectly authentic and completely uh, uh, accepted document. Uh, for every failure that you get, uh, I will give Soggy Boots a an insight check in order to see if what you have written triggers any alarms. How's that sound? Okay. All right, so make your skill checks. Let me know what skill you chose and what you rolled. Uh, I don't know. Sleight of hand. I got a 17 on the die, plus 7 for a total of 24. Okay. That's a pass. Also, folks, don't forget you have inspiration if you need a heat That's what's at the beginning oh, of yeah, this. Oh, yeah, I just burnt that. Um, <laughs> but thankfully I did. I got a natural 20 on deception. <laughs> okay. Damn. I'm going to count that as two successes. All right. I rolled for a sleight of hand, and I got 12. Okay. 12. Right. That was that was the DC I had in mind, so I'm going to consider that a success. All right. Lawful so. stupid, don't fail me now. <laughs> so we have four successes, but with a fifth success, I think I, I can reward you all with a little something extra. What, what do we got? What do we got, Everard? So it looks like we're looking at a 16 plus 4 for a uh, slutty 20. That is the sauciest 20 that has ever 20'd. Uh, that lawful stupid dice I, it really comes through. I'll say this. Cuts. I'll say this. With five successes between the four of you, not only are you able to make all of these edits to be entirely irrefutably authentic... Uh, but the section that you've trimmed, you've also managed to do it in a way that would be impossible to detect, that you have altered the length of the scroll, uh, meaning that whatever message you deliver will be the extent that anyone will be able to verify. Sound good? Sounds perfect. We are committing treason, so... <laughs> Eh, treason, smeason, you know, uh, the geopolitics of the beast wild. Yeah, we're not in Norway. Well, you know, the Pentarchy has and if no... The, and if the Pentarchy <laughs> finds out, we can blame it on Jafriri. Exactly. <laughs> it's it's his handwriting, after all. It's <laughs> foolproof. <laughs> and, and with five successes, especially with the nat 20 on deception from Catalina, I think it is foolproof. And you all managed to trim a perfect uh, edit of this document. Uh, so you're you're able to secret away, and you're able to do it in a way that both Captain Granolthy and Scrivener Hufupa don't notice. Um, uh, and uh, as they are uh, sort of. Waking up from their naps uh, uh, inside of the wagon, uh, and they uh, are, you can hear them rustling about. Uh, is there anything else that, any conversations or things that folks wanted to do 
uh, before they're interrupted by their supervisors. <laughs> Uh, do we, I mean, is there, I know we're on kind of a, a boat, if you will, at this point, but is there like a small lantern or something that we could use to, at the very least, heat water? Yeah, uh, there is, there are several lanterns. There are posts at each corner, uh, with hanging lanterns, and you can tell that these are fish oil lanterns. Uh, you may remove them and use the flame at will. Okay, so that said, I had picked um, a bunch of the good berries from uh, the last episode. Yeah. Um, so I am going to cook some of those down into kind of a tea and just kind of store that on hand for the while, um, thinking it'll last longer than the berries themselves. Yeah, would you like to give me a, a medicine uh, or a nature or survival check if you're trained in any of those? I assume sure. you're trained in most of those. Uh, let's see, survival I can do for a total of 18. 18 is what you need. Uh, uh, you have stored a potion of greater healing. Okay. And, oh, uh, that also reminds me, uh, you had, uh, collectively as a group, you had two units of rations after gathering the good berries last session. Uh, at the top of this session, you will now consume a unit of rations. So, uh, Synovia, if you wouldn't mind uh, marking down uh, our, our effective quartermaster report, uh, make sure that we don't run out of food. Oh, that actually um, reminds me of what I want to say. Um, this is very, very silly, but I want Catalina to see if she can, like, stick her hand in the water and catch something. <laughs> she also has a spear, so if she wants to go spear fishing, you um, yeah you're in deep water um i th i think the chances are uh, below medium <laughs> but i'm not gonna say no uh i would like uh yeah give me a roll and then i would like everyone to make a perception check okay that absolutely sucks i got a six <laughs> okay and uh what skill were you using um, I was using animal handling. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, so with a six, uh, how does how does Catalina go about noodling in the water to, to maybe catch a little protein? Um, I feel like she's just kind of looking, and maybe she notices, like, the glint of some scales or something like that. She's like, I can, I've, I've caught things with my hands before. Usually they're not fish, but rodents aren't much different, right? They're about the same size. Um, she has no kind of vibe on like oh large fish exist uh, so she kind of just like waits for the scales to get close enough and then like grabs for it yeah so there's uh, uh you all see uh catalina as as everard is finishing his his doctoring of the document uh and nail is trimming that that writ off with the sharp razor of a knife uh you all see catalina sort of lean over the side to try and get uh, a better position on something. Uh, so everyone else, everyone except Catalina, give me a perception check. I got a dirty 20. Dirty 20, all right. An 18 minus, no, sorry, 19 minus one for 18. Okay. Everyone's not very perceptive. And Nail. 11. Okay, 11. Uh, Nail is a little too uh, involved in, in making sure that the split on the vellum is perfect uh, to notice anything other than Catalina attempting to fish. Uh, but both Everard and Apollo, uh, seeing that sort of reflective glinting from the firelight of the, of the fish oil lanterns, look over the side and notice uh, that Catalina is attempting to grab what appears to be not really a fish, but more of like a uh, sort of like a jellyfish tentacled type aberration. Um, uh, as, as you pay a little bit more attention and you see the swirling and bubbling 
of the water off the side uh, where Catalina is leaning. Uh, Everard, you would know from your time in the Sensory Antiquarian about dangerous magical monsters that live in the ocean known as aboleths. Uh, and uh, Apollo, you are very, very aware that the waters around Nazkishak are uh, frozen on the top, but contain dangerous, nasty things. Uh, the goblins just call them snatchers. But they are what keep the water around Nazkishak, the semi-frozen lake, uh, safe from giants. So these are, these are things that are so dangerous that giants avoid them. Okay, I'm sorry. And she, how big is this thing? It's as well, big as the fairy barge. Yeah, they take giants, so they can only be, you know, a decent size. You know, just casually grabbing at its tentacles. What what Catalina thought maybe was a fish is just a single feeler kind of testing the side of the barge. Uh so, that doesn't look good. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe we don't bad. mess with that. Is it is it not a fish? It's definitely not a fish. I, not a fish for sure. Right, I mean, what do, we, so like what do I know pulls about? Her hand out of the water? Yeah, what do I know about? Uh, you, do I know that this is an aboleth? Is that like full on? Uh, you would you uh you wouldn't know them as aboleths. They have a few nicknames. Uh, uh, you would know them either as hell beasts or as wishing fish. Oh god, I'm now having Sabine flashbacks. Um Yeah, that's like a that's like a it's like a wishing fish. It's it's like it's it's, it's a name isn't enough name, but they're like big monsters. It's not very bad. They have like psychic powers. Oh. And shit. Okay, okay. They could um... probably kill us all, turn this thing over, and eat us slowly in the dark, deep water. Oh, okay. And Catalina kind of just takes, like, two steps closer to the wagon, like, away from the edge of the boat. Like, I thought it was a fish. Uh, as Catalina steps back, uh, you hear the wagon uh, open up, and Captain Granelthy steps out puts on her enormous captain's hat. And, uh... <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> now, uh... Let's, uh... Let's see here. Uh, captain should wake up anytime soon, right? <clears throat> and, uh, we'll be able to parlay for any kind of, uh... You know, rations we need. Torches. I think we ran out of torches. Dang season of storms. Um, but uh, just remember, everyone, I'm in charge. All right? So uh, speak when spoken to and uh, let the captains do the talking. All right? Let's, uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <clears throat> and uh, right around that moment, uh, you see Meatbone lean over the side of the railing, look down onto the barge, and call out, <laughs> Captain's up! <laughs> it's drinking time now, but, you know, he'll be by in just a bit to introduce himself. <laughs> well, any of you need uh, amputations, anything? All right, well, <laughs> here he comes! And you you hear a wet slap. Of soggy footsteps approaching the railing. And in the hazy fish oil light, the stinky gas light, you see the dread pirate soggy boots lean over the rail. A single eye patch, uh, a scallop shell over one eye, a beard of damp seaweed that steadily drips little briny dewdrops onto the fairy 
planks on where you stand. And he calls out, <laughs> Welcome to me ship, the Salty Squirter. I'm sure you all know me by reputation. <laughs> and it's true. I am Captain Soggy Boots. I have lured ye into a magnificent trap. Don't be hard on yourselves. It's impossible to see through me clever plans and ploys. And anyone could have fallen easily into me ruse. But I want to speak to whoever's in charge. And uh, at that, Captain Granelthy takes a step back and sort of shoots a, a, a dark glance at everyone. <laughs> uh, what happens next? So, so not that I have, you know, anything specific in mind, but just for my own, you know, forethought, the uh, the grabber, as I'm familiar with it, that's in the water, mm. is that thing still loosely within line of sight? I would say that uh, you can sense it is uh, it and potentially several of them are just sort of hanging out around this ship. Um, so... I guess moreover, can I see it well enough to know like how far below the water it is? More specifically, like theoretically I shot a crossbow into the water. Would I hit that thing? Uh I would say you probably have about a fifty fifty shot. Okay. Alright. Uh yeah. So who's the captain's Yes! Hello! I'm in charge of this group of beings on this little raft. What can I do for you, Mr. Captain Soggy Boots, sir? Squeefo looks about to, to speak up, but the captain claps a, a hand around his mouth. <laughs> takes off the hat and throws it at Everhart. Takes off her captain's hat. No one was saying anything. I had to say something. And I know I have a high charisma score. It's actually not that high. My uh, favorite part of this is that hat has to be at least nine times too big for <laughs> Everard. <laughs> it's is swimming in that hat. It's honestly like it's like picture a church lady's hat and just make it like twice as big, like, like, like Pharrell times five. You know what I'm saying? Like stupid. Um, and. Uh, <laughs> Like a like a like one of those like Dutch flying nuns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Everard, uh, the hat skillfully lands on top of your head, thrown like a frisbee across the barge as Granelthy uh, is now grappling Hufupa, who is going to make uh, a check to get out of that grapple and attempt to say something, every little bit. So let's make uh, let's make every phrase count. Yar, ye be in charge, do ye? Meatbone. Oh, yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> As one of my fellows, he's a, he's, re he's, he's just a real stand-up fella. All right, then. I have but one question for ye, and if ye can answer it, uh -oh. I shall spare ye all the torturous occupation of piracy. Oh, do you know what day it is? Yes. Yes, I do. Out with it, then, lest I lose <sighs> me patience. Sure, today is dawn day of the week of bleeding of the month of the moon of the season of storms. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, Captain Granelthy... And that's, that's at least by my calculation. Captain Gr Granelthy right. uh, manages to hold on to Squeef. Um, as, uh, as you see, Meatbone looks up at the at Soggy Boots. Soggy Boots 
squishes a clump of seaweed around his jaw. Just briny water running down his wrists. Yeah, but then it's true. Me hearties, crew, strike up the band. It's time to celebrate. Me anniversary. <laughs> oh, and you've brought me presents. All right, well, unload the wagons. All of you come up. Strike up the band. Crew, distribute the grog. It's time to celebrate. Oh, oh, but, well, now I've been asking every single group of postmen that come through as we've been uh, shuttling them across the water. But do ye perhaps have a letter from me beloved? Me beloved Zafiri always sends a birthday card. Why, a morning card. Sometimes he just sends a card to say I miss you. Anything, any, any news at all from me beloved. Oh no. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I think Apollo's gonna reach into his bag and uh, kind of hold it out and goes, um, yeah, I think, I think this, this is addressed to you. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but um, yeah, I guess, I guess this is for you. Uh, so, uh, Meatbone comes halfway down, grabs the letter, shimmies back up, and hands the uh, completely authentic, unedited, entire letter oh. to Soggy Boots. Uh, he lifts up the scallop eye patch and puts it on the other eye, blinks a few times. <clears throat> Eh, containing here the noble language of the Lord High Lord of Agros, confident of yeah, blah blah blah. Oh, House of Jeffroon, Zephyri, me beloved, oh, my soggy sweetheart. My plans have almost all come true. Oh, that's good news. While hiding amongst the poorest of Asmanavar's transient resort tourist population, I purchased a controlling share of the Golden Grotto Spa and Resort. Ho ho! Me, me little coin purse always up to no good he is. All of your damp plunder can be laundered there in the casino. You're so smart. I am! I do be smart! I was... It was, I was funding donations to Postmaster Flem, General Flem Krochkis, just as I planned. But wait, I planned that. No. But he was killed in a freak underground gas explosion. My goodness. Then the newly constructed boat was stolen by pirates. Sabine. The boatmaker's child was kidnapped and forced into piracy. Well, some good news at least. Ye must forgive me, me moist lover. I took it upon myself to organize the other prophets to contribute. Okay, uh-huh. Strategically positioned in the highest ranks of the cult. Me appointment as Lord High Lord of Agrost. Annul your crimes. Oh, he's done it, me love. We have amassed considerable influence over many postmasters. We've done it, my mistress. Well, it, that's his handwriting for sure. No, but you no longer have to hide out on the barren waves. You can come home to me and we can rule Agrost together. But Sabine's from Agrost. How I long for your misty tickles. Come to Osmanaber for this certified writ at once and accept your new position. Your furtive lover. But, no, no, Sabine, me trusted lieutenant conspiring behind me back with me soggy dumpling. I, I need to be alone, Meatbone. Distribute the gifts as you will in the standard pirate custom. 
I will, uh, <clears throat> I'll be in me captain's quarters celebrating me anniversary. And, oh, uh, man. I've done a lot of real bad things in the Beast Wilds, guys. <laughs> As Beast can definitely attest. That might be one of the worst. <laughs> he ruined his anniversary. Oh, on his anniversary. <laughs> and Pixel was there when he got married. I was, yeah. Sabine was there, actually. Sabine was Wasn't there. it Sabine? It was Sabine. Uh. <laughs> so, oh. as you, you hear... Also, Sabine would never. <laughs> you hear the, the soggy slaps of wet boots depart as the band strikes up a tune, the grog is distributed, uh, and uh, seconds are already being poured. Uh, and uh, Meatbone and Squeefa come down with another uh, group of, of pirate crewmen. Uh, they open up the wagon. They take the two chests uh, of magic items that you are to deliver uh, to to uh, Fularopolis, and they start hauling them up onto the ship. Uh, and Meepona stops and turns to all of you. <laughs> well, come on up. We're, we're going to start passing out the, the party favors, and there's plenty to drink. <laughs> but, uh, you know, be careful how much you consume. Conspicuous consumption could lead to accidents, and if you have an accident, I might have to amputate. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, they haul the treasure chests up. Uh, what do you do? Do you join the party? Do you hang back? Are there any conversations that you'd like to have? That was a, that was a, that was a rough thing to do. That guy. Brutal. Absolutely <sighs> brutal. That guy really loves his husband. Yeah. <laughs> And his husband's not cheating on him. <laughs> no, they're so committed to each other. They're awful people, both of them, but they really love each other. Mm. I, was say, I feel like Apollo might be the only one who's just like absolutely beaming at this point. Like it was a total success and he totally <laughs> screwed up this whole plan. And he's like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> they, did, they deserve each other. <laughs> uh, uh, truer words never spoken. Well, I feel so, like uh, I feel like Catalina ahead. sat for like a hot second, and then she's like, "Not the first match I've ruined. Let's go." <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, are y'all going to the party? Yes. RT. All right. Uh, after <laughs> after ruining this man's marriage, what's drinking his boots? All right, I would like you all to roll initiative. <laughs> oh boy. That's a seven. All right, seven. Now you'll roll it. Now you'll roll to ten. Ten from Niall. And that one from Everard for a total of three, oh, no. if that even matters. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I got a 22. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, as you all uh, climb up, Apollo followed by Nail, followed by Catalina, followed by Everard, uh, you are taken in that order uh, to sit at a, a circular uh, a, a table made out of barrels. Uh, with little boxes and crates and packages and things, uh, nets piled up as cushioning. Uh, the pirates have turned the entire deck of the Salty Squirter into a party, into a reception. Uh, you see all these different little tables dotted around, and there are dozens of crew. You see pirates of all walks of life, men, women, other genders, creatures that you have never seen before. Genasi, lizard folk, frog folk, uh, aracocra, halflings, dwarves. 
an entire menagerie of persons from the Beast Wilds who have all found their lot in life to have been improved or at least maintained through piracy. Uh, and as the grog is passed out and everyone enjoys a uh, second or third helping, uh, your meat bone sits you down at this table and you all see uh, a couple of pirates with hammers smash the locks on the treasure chests, uh, taking out burlap sacks. They start stuffing individual magic items from those chests into them and tying them off so that you can't tell what's in it. And you watch as this happens, they gather up a handful of these items, five, six, seven of them, and they deposit a group, a cluster of them at each table. <clears throat> and Meatbone and Squeefa come over to your table uh, with the four of you, and you can see Glemma, Knock Knock, uh, the captain and Hufupa are sitting at another table. Um, Meatbone and Squeefa sit you down, so the six of you around a table, <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do a traditional pirate gift exchange. <laughs> Have any of you heard of a dirty Felora? Uh, this is uh, this is like a dirty Santa, uh, a, a white elephant. You might have heard it called, where there are gifts that nobody knows. Maybe one person knows if they brought it. Uh, and in initiative, what all of you are going to do is uh, Apollo, at the top of initiative, is going to pick a random gift to open. Uh, once Apollo picks that gift uh, and opens it and reveals it, and I'll describe it for everyone, the person who goes after that, each successive person, gets a choice between opening another anonymous magic item or stealing one of the magic items that someone previously had obtained. Uh, each item can be stolen twice. As soon as it is stolen a second time, it becomes locked, or in pirate parlance, it becomes buried treasure, and you cannot retrieve it. Uh, so whoever buries their treasure gets to keep it, and it cannot be plundered. Uh, and we're gonna go in initiative order. I'm gonna roll for Meatbone and Squeefa because they are also participating. Okay, 13 and 14 each. So they're they're each gonna go Riddle. immediately after Apollo. In Meatbone and Squeefa in that order. Followed by Nail, followed by Catalina, followed by Everard. So, Apollo, uh, several beefy uh, pirates, uh, set down uh, a cluster of burlap wrapped magic items in front of you some of them have shapes you might be able to guess a little bit about uh, uh, but yeah uh, you see there are six items in the middle uh, would you like to just pick one at random or would you like to try and discern a little bit before before choosing uh, given that uh, as the person to go first, you have a special privilege, which is at the very end of the game, you get to steal any treasure that isn't buried. So anything that has been stolen less than two times, you get you can claim. Um, I think with that knowledge, I would probably just grab and see what comes to be. Okay. Uh... I'm going to roll for it. Okay, that is... Oh, that's a fun one. Okay, uh, you pick the smallest, lightest thing uh, to open. You undo the tie around the burlap opening. You reach in, and you pull out a gold ring. Uh... There, you're not able to discern what this ring does immediately, uh, but it does, it does vibrate a little bit in your hands. You can feel there's a, there's a hint of magic. And Apollo would certainly know the glint of old gold in the fish oil firelight. 
Okay, all right. All right. Up next is Meatbone. Uh, he is going to pick one at random. Uh, he opens up a burlap sack, and he takes out a big, round orb uh, that is made of gold material and is circled with studded gemstones. Uh, only three of the gemstones seem to glow, um, almost like a, like you may have seen like a, like a battery light on the side of modern technology. Oh boy! <laughs> this is my hot lamp! It's what I use for surgery! It, it, it produces a nice bright light! And, uh, oh boy, does it get bright! But you gotta turn it off or it overheats! I don't know what happens if it overheats, but I'm sure it would be catastrophic! Uh, up next is Squeefa, who is going to... Uh, he is actually going to... I want... I, I want the ring! <laughs> yes, it is made of gold! And uh, he is going to steal Apollo's ring. So, Apollo, you now get to choose another item. Would you like to investigate the remaining items or pick another at random? Uh, I think I will take at random. All right. Okay. Uh, you open a bag that is uh, full of objects that are maybe about golf ball size that all seem to be clacking against one another uh and when you open it up and look inside you are holding a bag full of diamonds uh okay. if you had to if apollo had to guess it there's probably something like a thousand gold worth of diamonds in here. okay uh after that nail uh, you may steal any of the uh, opened items, which are the gold ring, uh, the gold magic ring, the bag of diamonds, or uh, Meat Bones Hot Lamp. Or you may open, uh, choose to open. And you are, uh, you are muted. There you go. And I can, uh, but I can in kind of investigate the... Yes. Remaining packages. If you would like to make uh, either an investigation or maybe like an arcana check uh, to sort of sense uh, what is available, then give me a roll and I'll okay, tell you. I'm going to try an investigation check. All right. All right, that's a nat 20. Ooh, all right. Okay, so. With a nat 20, the remaining items are, uh, uh, you feel uh, a spool of thread. Um, by its weight, you can tell that it is not fabric thread, that it is maybe like almost like a metal wire, but it's it feels flexible. Uh, and you can, you can sense that it's, it vibrates a little bit in your hand. You can sense magic in it. Uh, there is uh, a pair of boots, uh, again, uh, these are all magic items, there's a pair of boots, uh, and you get the sense when you touch them that the heels seem to be extremely springy, uh, as if to uh, aid the wearer in acrobatics, uh, and there is a uh, a dagger, which, uh, again, you can tell is magic in nature. Those are the three things. So you have a magic dagger, a uh, magic pair of boots, and a magic spool of thread. I'm going to choose the boots. All right. You open up the sack, uh, and you see a pair of boots, fine leather. Uh, they have been made by master artisans, and they are emblazoned on the back with a, a frog icon. Uh, these are the boots of Frog Heel, um, and you will, uh, as as a as a arcane attuned person uh, and an elf, uh, 
you can tell that this will essentially double your jump ability, your ability to jump vertically or horizontally. All right, up next is Catalina. We have uh, the boots, the magic ring, the bag of diamonds, and the hot lamp in play if you'd like to steal any of those. Or you may choose from the <clears throat> remaining two, which is an old gold magic dagger or a, a spool of magic thread. Uh oh. Uh oh. James froze. Yo, 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 yo. How are we doing? Am I back? I can hear you now, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're back okay. now. Uh, Wait, hang on before. I want to make sure the stream comes back up before you go on. Okay. I think we're good. Okay. Uh, so Sometimes if it cuts out, it'll like dump the stream and you might have to restart it, but I think we're good. Uh, so Catalina is up next. Uh, after that will be Everard, but Catalina, you you have the option of choosing between the two remaining items uh, that have that are unclaimed, which is the old gold dagger or the magic thread, um, or you may steal any of the items currently claimed, which are the magic ring, meat bones hot lamp, or the um, uh, boots of frog heel or the bag of diamonds. I might just take the dagger. Okay. Yeah, so you open yeah. up the uh, the bag and you take out uh, a simple uh, but very effective razor uh, which has been wound with some, some leather around a grip. Uh, it's kind of funky looking, kind of weird angles and bent and jagged, but it is a dagger made out of old gold. Uh, it is a plus one magical dagger. All right, Everard, you may steal, you may, you may attempt to plunder any of the open and available treasures, or you may take the remaining uh, magical threat. I... I think I'm gonna take the ring. You're gonna steal the ring from Squeefa? Yeah, I think I'm gonna steal the ring from Squeefa. All right, that the magic ring has been stolen a second time. That means it is buried treasure. Uh, uh, Everard, as you touch this magic ring uh, and you get a sense of it, um, at first it seems to glow a little bit. Uh, it, ref it sort of amplifies the light around it. And as soon as you touch it, it almost seems to like go dark and almost lose its luster. Um, like it's, re it's reacting to you holding. Uh, you will be able to attune to that later, but it is yours. Uh, and as the final person to go is, uh, will be the first person, Apollo. Um, you have the bag of diamonds. Uh, where are my rules for this? So, okay, once everyone has a gift, the game ends. Okay, so uh, Apollo, since you, you have the bag of diamonds, uh, you oh, you do have the ability, uh, since you went first, you may steal anything that is currently unburied treasure uh, and you will swap your bag of diamonds for that thing. Um, and so what did, did Squeefa then turn around and grab the thread when I ah, grabbed the ring? No, you're right. Uh, Squeefa is... What does Squeefa Sorry. do? No, you're right. Thanks. Thanks. I just wanted to kind of... Yeah, so Squeefa uh, is going to... So uh, Squeefa is going to take the... Uh, boots of Frog Heel from Nail. <laughs> I would like these. They look very fine. Uh, so Nail, uh, you now have the opportunity to steal another item, or take the old gold thread. Your choice. Uh, the current items up for grabs are an old gold dagger, uh, Meat Bones Hot Lamp, uh, a, a mysterious orb that emits bright light, um, a bag of diamonds. Uh, and the you can claim the unclaimed magical thread. 
but the boots have only been stolen once, so I can theoretically steal them back, yes, right? You, oh, that's true, yes. They have only been stolen once. They are not yet buried. And Sweet. so, <laughs> I say, uh, tough nubbins there, Squeefer. Give me them boots back. Oh, no! I am left without! Uh, he is going to turn to uh, Catalina. Gimme! Gimme! And steal uh, Catalina's dagger. So the dagger has been stolen once. Uh, the boots are now buried treasure. Uh, so they are, they are Niels forever. But Catalina has the opportunity to uh, steal back the dagger, to claim the thread, meet Bones' hot lamp, or the bag of diamonds. I don't even know what I do with the bag of diamonds. Well, what does anyone do with a bag of diamonds? <laughs> um, <laughs> Genuinely asking. <laughs> how, much, how much do I like this dagger? And how useful is that thread? I might take the thread. I'll take the thread. Mm. You open up the sack and you take out a spool of golden thread. Uh, it seems to unwind itself as you hold it in your hand. The spool itself uh, becomes an easy handle for you to grip, uh, and the thread is 10 feet long. This is uh, effectively uh, either old gold thread, which you can use to tie things together. This is like super rope. It's 10 feet long. Uh, or with a, with a little bit of practice, you might be able to wield this as a whip. Convenient. Uh, and as Catalina claims the remaining magic item, uh, Apollo now has the opportunity to steal any unburied treasure and swap out the bag of diamonds. So, Ace, your options are Meat Bones Hot Lamp, uh, the Old Gold Dagger. I think that's it. Oh, you could steal the thread from Catalina. Um, I think I'll take the dagger. Ooh, no! <laughs> Not again! Squeefa hands you the dagger. Oh, a bag of diamonds! <laughs> this is much better. I agree. So, uh, you all uh, now have your plunder. Um, and uh, I can send the descriptions of each of those to you. Uh, but the gist is, uh, Everard, uh, after taking a little bit of time to study and attune to the ring, um, you're familiar with these types of rings. Uh, it, when you look on the inside of the band, you actually see the mark of the Faloran cross. Uh, this is a detect non-magic ring. So it glows in the presence of things that are not magical, emitting a very dull light. Uh, but when close to things, items that are magic, it goes completely dark, like a normal ring. Uh, Nail, the Boots of Frog Heel, uh, as I've said, double your jump and uh, your vertical and horizontal jump, uh, and you have advantage on all acrobatics checks. Uh, Apollo has a old gold dagger. This is a plus one magical weapon. Uh, deals 1d4 plus 1. It ignores all damage resistances uh, and has all of the same aspects of a dagger. Uh, and when you grip it, Apollo, it almost seems to... The handle kind of like molds to your hand a little bit. It feels like uh, it's decided you own it. Um, and perhaps as you continue to use it, it may continue to adapt itself to your use. Uh, and finally, Catalina, the old gold thread. Uh, 
is a plus one light finesse whip that ignores damage resistances, uh, which means that you can use it in your offhand with no penalties. Meatbone uh, holds up his hot lamp. <laughs> well, this thing, this thing's crazy. Uh, I'm kind of glad I got to keep it because uh, otherwise I wouldn't be able to see what I'm chopping, you know? <laughs> you need a good light. And uh, look, watch this. And he sort of knocks on it. <laughs> clunk, clunk. And it just starts to... And you can see from inside of intense, bright, hot, white light begins to grow from a single spark into a little dot into a moat of light. Every second, it seems to just get a little bit bigger. Uh, and uh, after about 15 seconds or so, it's so bright that you can hardly even look at it without being blinded. And he just kind of knocks it a couple more times. And the light goes dim. And one of those three glowing gemstones blinks out. Uh, <laughs> it's a pretty fun thing. And he sort of leaves it on the table and he scoops up some grog and he chugs a bunch. <laughs> I'm sure nobody will take this. Everybody knows it's mine. <laughs> Party! I love love and Meatbone wanders into the party. So you are all sitting around the table. Uh, Squeefa is <laughs> passed out, drunk uh, from too much grog, uh, too much shrickers. And um, uh, yeah, what do you do? You are in the middle of a pirate anniversary party. Everyone seems to be having a great time. Every now and then you hear shouting and fist fights. Uh, what do your characters do? So, I know I'm not the smartest person, seeing how I stuff in my hand in, in the water and not knowing what was in there. But weren't we supposed to deliver these or something? Or is it something else that we're supposed to deliver? No, these are the items. They were taken out of the chests that you are supposed to deliver. Oh, great. Okay. I mean, it's... Yeah, I mean, we've been pirated. <laughs> but then given some of our own stuff back. <laughs> for some reason. Was it really yours to begin with? <laughs> yeah, well, it is now. I think that's the, that's the takeaway, right? <laughs> All of these things are yours now. And you, you look over to the other table, and you see... Glemma and Knock Knock are holding little bits and bobs. Glemma's got a belt. Um, Knock, got, Knock Knock's got a little bell. Um, uh, the captain, you know, is like furiously trying to steal her hat back from a pirate. Um, yeah, it's, it's a fun time all around. Everyone's having a great time. Except, well, one person isn't having a good time. That's not him. But yeah, well, what, what would you all like to do? So, as a man of opportunity, <laughs> and nothing else. Okay, all right, here we go. Is <laughs> If Meatbone left his stuff laying around, if Apollo were to look around to any of the other tables, is that just like a common thing amongst the pirates here? Like, do they just it's real sloppy. expect everybody not to take their stuff and it's just left laying around? You look around, uh, there are a lot of uh, misplaced party favors. Uh, and there are a lot of people who could reliably be construed as their previous owners who are not attentive. Hmm. Any of them bow and or crossbow in nature? Uh, yeah, give me, give me an investigation or a perception check. Uh, and if anyone else is looking for anything specific or like a piece of clothing, a ring, a weapon, anything like that, let me know. 
Ooh, okay, okay. So I got a 23 in total. Okay, 23. Solid. Uh, yeah, Ace, uh, Apollo looks around at all of the other tables. You see Meatbone's hot lamp, uh, and it, it, as it, even as it is cooling off from however he activated it, you can see that the wood of the barrel table that it's set on is scorched. Um, this thing is dangerous. Uh, and you look at some of the other tables, various pirates, you know, fist fighting or otherwise asleep or just dancing. Uh, and there is a massive, it looks like a, it's literally a crossbow, a, a crossbow that has two uh, bow apparatuses strapped to a stock. Um, it's, it's about the size of a heavy crossbow, but what's weird about it is instead of it being a solid stock, there's almost like a hollowed out portion in the middle where instead of shooting a bolt, you know, with some sort of, you know, uh, tension mechanism, it almost has like a little pouch uh, where the ammo would go. Almost like you stuff it with stuff and it launches debris. A blunder bow, if you will. Okay. So, in order for this to work, my own logistics here, I'm going to need to know. The arrowheads I have, mm. would those work on inanimate objects? Yes, they do. <laughs> oh my god. What have I, <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> So, so I think Apollo is uh, <laughs> going to just make his way towards that and um, just kind of, you know, nonchalantly kind of walk past and poke that crossbow with one of those arrowheads and shrink it down and, and just kind of see if anybody happens to notice at first. And then assuming it goes fairly unnoticed, then he will try and tuck it away while it, it is quite hidden. All right. I'm going to say that the entire group, the, the party, the revelers, the pirates themselves are going to make a perception check with disadvantage. And uh, I would like you to give me, or excuse me, an insight check with disadvantage. I would like you to give me a deception check to see if anyone notices. Damn it, how about a stealth check? Stealth check, I'll accept stealth. Okay. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll t let me tell you the number you gotta be. Okay. At disadvantage, this is scary. You have to beat a five. Oh, well, I rolled a 15 on the die for a total of 22. You shrink it down. Nobody is the wiser. Uh, and actually, one guy even bumps into you, looks at you and goes, Hey! <laughs> Chugs some grog, passes out. You are the proud owner of a blunderbow. Beautiful. Uh, and uh, at, at its current state, uh, it's about the size of a hand crossbow. Okay. All right. Anyone else up to shenanigans, hijinks, mischief? Um, I think I want to maybe go last. So if anyone else has anything else. If um, Glamma Knock Knock and um, the captain are up here, does that mean that um, Rupa and Serena are still on the boat? Uh, Serena is uh, at the table with Glamma Knock Knock, Captain, and uh, Hufupa. Um, but I think at this point, she has meandered over to y'all with two mugs of Shrikers. Um, she tapes a sip from one. <laughs> takes a sip from the other. <laughs> oh, Catalina! They make all their liquor out of shrimp! Oh, that's not what I was expecting you to say. <laughs> I thought you were just gonna say it's bad. Oh, it's the tastiest thing I've ever had! That's the problem! Savory liquor, have you ever heard of such a thing? Right, please don't get too drunk. Did you did you get anything nice? 
Oh, I sure did. And uh, she she holds up a necklace that's now around her neck. Isn't it pretty? It's it's not magic. I just stole it from a drunk pirate. Okay, that's that's good enough for me. He winked at me, and he wasn't very polite about it. You think he has anything else on him? She tur- she she turns around, uh, reaches into a <laughs> f- sleeping pirate's pocket, pulls out a coin purse, jiggles it, <laughs> puts it, stuffs it into a pocket. Oh, not anymore! He doesn't. Dumps both mugs on onto the sleeping pirate. <laughs> Goes right back to sleep. All right, I think Catalina is gonna do her her meandering and see what she can pick off of people, okay, or tempt people into giving her freely. Uh, is Catalina looking for anything in particular? Um, what kinds of so. things uh, would catch Catalina's eye? I think she's either weapons that are very very pretty or things that are like really really nice clothes because she's like everything's always too small so if there's really really nice clothes i'll take it but if there's not i want weapons yeah uh you do see um a beautiful sort of uh it's like a tiara wig combo um so it's it's a it's a wig that has been built into a crown uh with jewels made out of gold material um and in the wig is is like some you know it's nice braided wig about shoulder length uh has like little clips of gold and chains and uh decorations all throughout uh and there is a pirate who is currently uh passed out backwards with it on covering the front the the back is is to the front they've 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 pulled a uh, oh my gosh, what is her name? Effie? They they reversed the wigs, is what I'm saying. Um, I feel like I'm going to, if there's any kind of just like loose fabric or canvas or whatever, I'm going to pick that up and I'm just going to drape it over where the, the wig was and just take the wig off his head. So you all see uh, Catalina wanders off, um, takes a burlap bag that had been used to contain one of the presents, slips it over a pirate's head, and then quickly just sort of whips it off, and uh, the pirate is now asleep. (laughs) And wigless. Uh, You have gained the wig of distraction. Uh, This gives uh, disadvantage to anyone rolling a perception or insight check against you while you are wearing it. I love that. (laughs) All right, uh, Nail and Everard, or Nail, uh, since Everard requested yep. to go last, what's Nail up to? Okay, Nail uh, kind of cast his uh, eye about the deck and amongst the people for two reasons. One, he wants to see uh, in case the uh, stuff hits the fan, he wants to know which pirates are the most uh are the least drunk and the most dangerous, therefore. And so who he's going to have to take out first. And then he's going to kind of look for anything that can be any kind of, uh, uh, and he has, uh, let's see, he has a little bit of arcana uh, ability and he wants to see if there is anything that might uh, boost his stealth. Okay. Uh, so he's uh, kind of wandering about the deck, uh, seeming to, he's got, a, he's got a mug of grog in his hand, and he pretends to take a sip of it once in a while, but uh, uh, he's really the soberest one of the group, pretty much, uh, at least the pirates anyway. And uh, so he's uh, doing two things. He's looking for that uh, uh, stealth aid and, and also, uh, sizing up the crew and see who's you know where he's gonna have to start in if if, uh if something begins to happen all right i would like you to give me uh an investigation check to scan for uh items which may amplify nail's stealth 
And then I'd like you to give me an insight check to get a sense of the the revelers, the pirates. All right. Okay, the uh, investigation check is a 15. 15, all right. And yeah. the insight check. Insight check. Let's see, that's a plus three. Whoa, that's pretty low. It's uh, three plus three is six. I'll say, I'll say with a six, uh, you can tell that this party is uh, probably what would be described as a normal pirate celebration, which means that it is full of people who are so entirely inebriated uh, that you could almost punch some of them in the face and they probably wouldn't react other than to cheer. Um, uh, you do notice that the there are several pirates who are not taking uh, alcohol. Uh, they're reveling in their own way, but um, you know, they're they're acting just as rowdy as the rest of them. Uh, for your investigation check, though, uh, as you look around, uh, you notice um, <clears throat> at the table with the captain and the rest of your team um, that one of the pirates. Uh, is demonstrating their party favor, which seems to be a small clockwork, uh, almost like a, a bird or a bat, some kind of flying creature. Um, just fits in the palm of their hand, and they wind it up, and they say something to it, and you hear it bah, 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 recreate the message. Uh, and they sort of toss their hand up a little bit, and the thing f starts flitting around uh, like a almost like a drone um, and it it wanders over uh, to you uh, in sort of this circular pattern and you can tell it's gonna come around again for another uh, round as all of the pirates go like ooh oh, that's so cool man yeah you should get more of those uh, it's coming around for a second uh, spin close to Nail's face uh, would you like to grab it Okay. Uh, as the thing comes around again, Nail reaches out his hand and uh, stops it and pretends to examine it closely. And it, it delightfully uh, voluntarily perches on Nail's hand. Uh, and you can tell this it's a little clockwork dragon. Um, uh, this uh, is a essentially a non-living familiar um so if you wish to have a familiar uh you may keep this one uh it and it it squawks to you in the language of the pirate um you know it tells a a, a nasty joke or a, something funny yeah. the doctor i told one to the doctor i said i i have i someone told me you know, I have a problem with looking at seaweed. And the doctor said, no, you just need to seek help. But, um, but you can tell that uh, this familiar is able to listen and repeat things that it has heard upon uh, uh, command. Okay. I think I'll keep it does its previous owner notice they are way too drunk to notice they rolled a three on their perception <laughs> and this this thing uh you know has a little dial in the back uh if you twist it to sort of the off position um it'll kind of fold up into a little pocket sized contraption so easily Alrighty easily hideable. All right. And last uh, on of the team, Everard. What's Everard up to? I want to figure out how this ship moves. Yeah. Uh, Everard, uh, as you were coming in, you saw these enormous, uh, this 
big paddle wheel um, that you had approached on the outside of. You can tell that it has something to do with the, the way that this ship is supposed to move. Uh, and there's one on either side, and in the middle of that, um, as you had noticed, was a, a smokestack, a chimney, uh, which has been belching smoke. Um, Everard's educated at this point and has seen enough contraptions and things that I think they would be able to surmise whatever this chimney stack is, whatever is at the center of the ship, has something to do with this locomotion. Okay. Now describe to me, did they load the whole wagon onto the ship or just the stuff out of the wagon? Is just the little the raft? Okay, and the, but the little raft is still like... It's lashed to the side, floating okay. next to the, the salty squirter. Gotcha. So your wagon, your rations, any personal effects that you don't have on you are all stashed on the okay. ferry. And how would I have understood the, the idea of like, obviously this is a trap or whatever and they're stealing all these magic items right like would it like i just am trying to grasp like the distance involved is the idea that the salty squirter tows the postman where they're supposed to go do they just bring us out here steal our stuff and then we get back on the raft and go like what's the general like what would i understand about this process um uh it uh bonus dead might have all good if you want to step away briefly um I'm gonna, re or if you have the time, we'll, we'll resolve Everard's thing and we'll take a short break. Um, so, uh, sorry, Everard, uh, repeat your question one more time. Uh, my question is, what do I understand about, like, is the uh, the distances involved and stuff? Is the idea that the that the salty squirter tows along the coastline the raft? It is or anchored. Do we uh, okay, but like, but I'm guessing in general, am I, is my understanding that we go to the ship and then we get back on the raft and then we like pull the raft along? Like what? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, right. so uh, Meatbone and Squeefa had had sort of towed your raft out into the deeper water to get away from gotcha. the rain. Uh, you are currently dry, thank heavens. Um, uh, there is no raining. There are no storms right now, so you're able to enjoy the clear although dark skies. Um, the idea being that uh, Meatbone and Squeefa had been waiting several days for the last wagon to show up, which is you guys. And they had been doing so in the rain and they very much wanted a break. Gotcha. Okay. Um, that answers my question if we want to go ahead and take a break and I'll, okay. I guess, try to figure out what, what Everett actually wants to do. All right, let's, uh, let's hop off for a few minutes, folks. Um, Let's take five, so back at about 8.06. Get some water, get some snacks, uh, do your bio break. We'll see okay. y'all soon. Uh, before you...
Oh, they didn't hear that. Bam! And we are back. Uh, so, uh, we uh, are in the middle of uh, the most notorious, maybe about to be the second most notorious pirates in the Beast Wilds wedding anniversary. Um, he, uh, the infamous pirate Soggy Boots, uh, otherwise known by his government name, Salagushio Bart, of the Bart Company Freelance Pirates, uh, has received a note which seems to have been uh, authentically made out to his lieutenant, Sabine the Gold Death Pirate Queen, uh, who has been ravaging the seas of the Beast Wild since the skies of shadow befell. Um, and we may learn a little bit more about Sabine as uh, our adventure goes on, but for now, we're concerned with being in the middle of uh, a bunch of drunken pirates who all have access to a lot of magical items. Uh, it seems kind of like an irresponsible setup, if you ask me. A lot of bad stuff could happen. Uh, and we were just about to see Everard Elder Tingle. Uh, investigate the central smokestack chimney furnace structure uh, at the center of the boat. This massive pirate ship which can hold um, dozens and dozens of crew uh, and the necessities to uh, for their daily life to function. Uh, Everard, you approach this smokestack and on either side of the ship which is, it's a good like 30, 40 feet across. Um, massive deck. Uh, you know, a good a good seven, eight, ten people of different ancestry could sort of lie down uh, head to toe. And looming over the sides are the tops of these massive paddle wheels that uh, otherwise would drive this enigma of a ship which has no wind sails forward through the waters. Anchored as it is, uh, you can smell the belching smog coming out of the top of this uh, to be a fishy, oily, smoky substance. Indeed, the pirates are refining fish oil in order to burn as a source of light. Uh, potentially very dangerous thing to do because as you all know, the fish in these deep waters are aboleths, dangerous, telepathic, tentacled creatures uh, known in other parts of the Beast Wilds as hell beasts or by some as wishing fish for their ability to read the desires of their victims. Everard, what do you do as you approach this, uh, this contraption? Okay, so I think... Everald, Everard initially had a plan to sort of, like, attempt to, like, unanchor this thing and just go where we wanted to go while everyone was drunk. I don't think that's a realistic oh, plan man. anymore. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's going to work. Okay. So I, I think he, at some point soon, is going to want to confer with our little group here. Uh, but in the meantime, I think what I want to look for is if I can find enough of this kind of oil to constitute light for us and want to see if i can find like where they keep their food stores my plan is at this point maybe to take the emptied out crates that they've left somewhere on the deck probably put some of their own supplies into it while no one is looking load that shit back onto our wagon so that we have food and light and then maybe talk to everybody else but i've had a thought of like well while everyone's drunk what if we just like unanchor the ship, turn on the engine, point it in a direction, get back on our little thing and just get out of here. Oh, so that's man. like my rough working plan. But I wanted to talk to everybody because people may have a better one. But before I do, I want to have a good sense. So what I want to do right this moment is figure out, okay, where's the food and how are they storing this oil stuff? So that's yeah. that's the immediate con So with the, with the party having broken out, uh, there are crates that have been cracked open uh, that are full of like salted meats, uh, mostly like salted fish uh, or salted aboleth, uh, different you know seafoods which have been preserved, uh, pickled in jars, 
Um, uh, there uh, also is uh, just an enormous amount of calories invested in trickers in a type of uh, pirate grog, uh, a very potent liquid uh, which could be considered a form of ration but with dangerous side effects. Uh, there is so much of that that you, you think you could easily grab uh, a couple of casks of shrikers. Um, the obvious downside being that uh, you may have some issues with uh, digestion of that uh, form of calorie. Otherwise, uh, as Everard's looking around this sort of fish oil factory, you can see that they are taking barrels full of fish that are still flapping around, live fish, uh, in salt water, and they're just sort of dumping them into this enormous uh, burning mouth of a furnace, just whoosh, and the steam comes out and mists a couple of the pirates who are doing this dirty work. Um, and uh, as it cooks up all of this fish, there's a, a pipette that comes out of the, the chimney central smokestack and is <laughs> dripping fish oil into casks on the side. So there's, there's a pirate who's collecting the processed fish oil and casks, hammering it down, sealing it with wax, goom, 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 and setting them aside. Uh, so you have casks of oil, units of light, uh, the fish themselves that they're using to produce that as potential rations, and also just the general party fare that you could probably steal a little bit of, um, which may include some potent alcohol. Great. Uh, yeah, I'd like to go back and try to get the group together so we can hash out a plan here. Yeah. Uh, do you collect the rest of your group or just uh, the PCs? I want to. I want to do the PCs for sure. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Every Any, I want to get the group who helped us doctor the document because we're all in this together. Everyone okay. else, there's some questions. The, so that group, that's not the management. Not. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Not. So, so Serena, uh, Glemma, and Knock Knock, uh, who have wisely all. Uh, not Serena. Uh, Serena's been drinking. Glemma and Knock Knock have been refusing potent alcohol, and uh, they notice Everard, and you all meet back around the table. Um, uh, as, you know, uh, Ace, uh, or excuse me, Apollo is uh, is sort of tucking a, what, a weird hand crossbow into his cloak. Um, Catalina is, uh, is uh, wearing a strange fetching new wig it's it's captivating uh and uh with a beautiful glistening tiara and uh, nail seems to have a spring in his step while he also tucks a little something away in his cloak um you catch the glint of gold and clockwork uh and you are all gathered back again around the party table uh it is loud and raucous and you are certain that you can have a private conversation Okay, so there's just cards on the table here. We're in kind of a pickle, obviously. Um, they took all the magic crap that's supposed to go to the sensor antiquarium, which, full disclosure, I don't really care about that super much. Uh, the sensor antiquarium sucks, and fuck those guys. Um, but we probably kind of need to figure out, like, what we're going to do at this point. So, uh, I, I looked around a little bit. There's food and uh, fish oil that we could possibly acquire. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there may be some way to just, like, bargain with these people. But also, like, they're all drunk. Like, maybe we'll just take it and leave. And then I was also thinking maybe if we figured out how to, like, unanchor the ship. We could just, like, point it out into the ocean and let it ride off while they're all drunk if we can get away with that i don't know that might be that might be a big ask but i think i, I don't think we're gonna get all these items back unless we like kill everybody on board which seems probably not super doable you'd be slitting throats for like two hours 
Or... Someone's going to catch on by then. Yeah, so or... figure, that, figure that out. Listen, I mean, if that's the objective, uh, it wouldn't help us get the items back, but we could just piss off a grabber and whatever happens, happens. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, they're kind of, I mean, I don't know how exactly we would do that because they're cooking them. So I feel like if they were going to get pissed off, they'd already get pissed off. So I'm not really sure, you know, maybe, maybe there's a way to do that, but I, I don't know what it is. How about we not piss anyone off just yet? We can we can piss people off when we were not all of our options. But if we pretend to like draw up a fake little contract and have them sign it when they're drunk and then leave it here and just be like, well, you signed this contract. You can't get mad at us for taking your stuff. I'm, look, I'm not opposed to the idea, but I'm just saying I feel like pirates aren't the most reasonable and probably wouldn't abide to a contract. <laughs> Well, they sign them when they have to, but I think those are in specific circumstances. My line of work requires contracts. Um, Everard just sort of like gestures at the contraption, which I know is kind of like w out of game. Pixel knows that it's one sort of one of a kind, but uh, Everard asks, like, does anybody know much about those things in general? Like those that whatever that contraption is that makes this thing run. Anybody see anything like that before? Uh, Serena speaks up. Oh, Catalina, remember when we did that show out on that bluff overlooking the ocean, and they were talking about the ship as it was going by with no sails, and everyone scattered into the forests and inland because they were talking about a pirate raid. Why, I'm pretty sure we're on deck of the Salty Squirter. And this is the ship that Mava Bart stole. Why, it was right around the time my older sister was born, Althea. I just about 25 years ago it was. But wait, I always heard growing up that Mava Bart, this was, this was the ship that she was trying to steal when they sank the lily. Curious. I'm pretty sure it's one of a kind, built by gnomish engineers, and it's fueled by flames. The fires of industry, they said. Uh, that uh, would tip off Apollo, uh, who is used to being around the goblin foundry in Nazgashak. And I think Apollo would have a basic understanding of, like, combustion furnaces. Yeah, okay. So I, I would be at least somewhat familiar with how this functions. Uh, and Apollo would know that this is more or less, it's a, it's a furnace that uses uh, combustible material to convert uh, heat into kinetic energy using funneled steel. So, so realistically, just yeah, not that I have anything specific in mind, but realistically, the hotter that would be, the faster this boat would go. Absolutely, absolutely. And and fish oil's pretty. It, it burns fast, and it doesn't it doesn't burn that hot. Uh, not the best fuel source. But um, like. Theoretically, if I had like a magic orb that gets really hot really quickly and dropped it in there, this boat would go really fast. That, that would, uh -oh. that would, yeah. If you had something okay. that just grew in intensity and heat potential, like every six seconds or so, uh, until it exploded, that would be devastating. So like potentially send a whole bunch of pirates way far away and then, you know, blow up their boat and then not our problem anymore. At the very least, it would utterly disable the ship wherever it was. <laughs> so I mean, we have options. I mean, I, you know, I'm not looking to do anything crazy by myself, but we have options. <laughs> well, and you're not going to do anything crazy by yourself. You're all going to do something crazy together. Of course. Okay, so I think maybe the first step is to like try to try to get some of the food and rations onto our little raft thing. 
Um, and then maybe we go from there. Or do we need to have like a full plan and and then some people do one thing while other people do the other part of the plan? For speed. I like coins. I think I think you can take it in steps all together. Alright. Well Yeah, Glemma who's, who's for stealing food and light? Glemma and Knock Knock uh, share a look. Uh, Glemma whispers to Knock Knock and uh, Knock Knock says Steal some light! Steal some light! Um, is that orb still here? Yeah, it's on the table. Okay, I pick up the orb. Oh, yikes. You pick up the orb, and it's still warm. Okay. <laughs> and there's a little burnt mark where on the table where it was. And yeah, uh, guess... two of those gemstones are glowing. Okay. I guess we'll just put that. To, I don't. I don't know. Apollo mentioned it, but I. I, I just. You know, if we're gonna we'll use this later. to somehow blow up this ship or send it off into the middle of nowhere, we should have it with us. So. So uh, Serena pipes up. Okay, what are we gonna do about the captain and Hufuba? Do we let them in on the plan? Are they coming with us? Are they coming with us is a good question. It's a really good question. Because we could send them here. <laughs> Look, I am I am in this with whatever you guys want to do. I'm here for it. But all I'm saying is, oh no, effectively, last... I had deliveries of my own that are a whole separate thing. And your guys' delivery is kind of off the table. So we <laughs> don't necessarily need them at this point. <laughs> Oh no, also, we were captured by pirates. And we, we do have the, the captain's game. hat still. That's right. Well, and, I, I don't okay. know what the signal of the captain's <laughs> station is, but the that's captain, like... <laughs> the captain abdicated her leadership and dropped it on Everard. Yes, that is that is true. The, the Everard is still wearing a massive hat. <laughs> So floppy. I tell you what, I take the hot, I take the warm thing and I wrap it up in the captain's hat and stuff it in a sack. <laughs> <laughs> I was really hoping he's gonna say put it back on, so we just got like this orb <laughs> in the <laughs> whole front. <laughs> that is way funnier. <laughs> yeah, uh, you you disguise the hot lamp in the, the captain's hat. Um, <laughs> what's what's next? Uh, uh, Glemma and Knock Knock have agreed to, to try to steal some units of light. Um, so I can roll for them if anyone would like to help them. Uh, I'll, you know, let me know. Uh, who's. Okay, so who's who's stealing light? Glemma and Knock Knock are going to steal light. Would anyone like to steal light with them? Who's stealing food? And who is attempting to uh, unanchor uh, the, the ship and then. The fourth task is going to be to start up the engine or to overheat it. So, four things for y'all to do. Light, food, disable the anchor, and start up the engine. Okay, out of character, I'm going to say I think Apollo has the best shot with the engine, given your... Yep, that's Nos what Kiss I was going to Okay. So, let's, hand, let's take the thing out from under the hat and hand it over <laughs> to Apollo. <laughs> Um, I will be honest, Everard will suck at almost all of that. Uh, probably. I'm very, I have a negative two strength and negative one perception. <laughs> I'm okay at stealth, but I'm very bad at lots of it. Um, we've got, I guess, I guess Everard maybe should help steal light. I can, I can actually add a, an additional task, a final task, which is to, uh, either distract or misdirect Captain Granolthy and Scrivener Hufufa. Hmm. I literally have a wig that does that. <clears throat> and that is Niall true. Will, uh, Niall will attack the anchor problem. All right. Niall's going to get that anchor up. Catalina's going to be the distraction. Okay, so I guess that leaves me on me and my negative two strength on food. All right, Everard. It's up to you to grab as much food as we can. 
Oh, and boy. Apollo, you got to start the engines. Uh, so everybody, please roll initiative, and we'll uh, we'll handle that in initiative order. Nothing could go wrong. Oh no, it all went wrong. Okay, all mm-hmm. right, that's all right. That's a natural 20 for a 23. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's a 10 total for Everard. Okay. Middle of the pack. 17 for Nayun. 17? <laughs> I got a 15, which puts me ahead of Everard, which makes me a little nervous of how this is going to play out. That's okay. It'll take the engine a little time to warm up, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> uh, so, Paul is on engines. Nail's on the anchor. Catalina is on distraction. Everard is on food. Uh, Glemma and Knock Knock. Oof, did not roll super great. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll a d4, and that is the number of units of light they're able to s- steal away. That is two. Two units of light. Uh, mark that down, quarter- Quartermaster. And uh, Catalina, tell me how you are able to distract the captain and Rufupa from the goings-on aboard the ship. Mm. I think I feel like Hafupa is easier to agitate. A hundred percent. So I think I'm gonna do um, what every person knows not to do during Thanksgiving, and I'm going to criticize his politics. <gasps> oh um, man! <laughs> I'm going to stroll up, um, fight, grog fight, in one fight. hand. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit down and be like, hey, dude, I have something that I've been dying to tell you this entire time. If my ears are open. I think your whole debt system is kind of stupid. Like, I was thinking about it because, like, when you're born, you don't ask to be born, right? And, like, when you're born in Jefferson City, it's like, well, now I have debt, but I'm. I'm six hours old and that doesn't make any sense right because like how is a six a six hour old baby supposed to pay you they can't unless their parents have like a lot of money but like, not a lot of people have a lot of money nobody so, like, held a knife to my throat nobody forced me to take out debt I you don't know that you were a baby you can't remember hmm my memory is not what it could be from that time, but I do have my signature on the contract. Uh, and he, he digs into a bag and he unrolls a scroll and you just see like a baby's handprint in ink. Dude, that's not a signature. That Your parent did that. That is coerced. Oh, but it is what is expected. Uh, it is another time in our life. If we did not do this, we would miss out on milestones. <laughs> your first milestone is collecting debt. Like, you pop out of your mom, and it, the bank's like, you owe us money for breathing. Uh, and like Everybody does it, though. Uh, no. Where I'm from, you're just expected to, like, meet a nice guy and have his kid, and then maybe talk to him a little bit later if you really like him. But, like, you don't have to pay people. Like, he just has to be strong and a good warrior. And, like, that's it. <laughs> you don't have to pay people. That is the funniest joke I have ever heard. You are hilarious. I have misjudged you. But I'm not joking. You. Oh, 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 I love this type of humor. The double down. Oh. Uh, you have, uh, you've, you've picked up on the one topic that Hufupa could literally talk all day about, which is money. Uh, I'm, and... bring, I'm dragging the captain into this. I'm like, what do you think about debt? Oh my gosh, uh, this again. Look, I'm retiring. I don't care if y'all take out loans. Nobody held a knife to your throat. What are you supposed to miss out on milestones? Nobody wants to work anymore. Oh wow, you su- you sound like you listen to Havupa. I can't uh, believe you're taking yeah. orders from somebody else. Uh, 
I don't take orders from nobody. Captain goes to, like, touch their hat. You know, accidentally, like, spores, spills some uh, grog on themselves. <laughs> oh, this is gonna... Well, it'll make the other stains less noticeable. Uh, and, uh, yeah. You are able to engross them in entirely unproductive conversation. Uh, they cannot take their eyes off of you and your fantastic new wig. Uh, up next, uh, we have... <laughs> Nail, you slip along the side of the boat to disable the anchor. Uh, you come across a mechanism, a thick corded rope as, uh, as wide around as your waist, uh, clearly attached to a type of winch mechanism. There's another rope above that sort of latched onto, uh, looks like a counterweight of sorts. Um, which is tied up to keep the anchor down. Uh, and you see that line that's securing it tied uh, just, you know, next to the railing where you're sort of leaning off the side of the boat. So examining the knot that secures that rope to the rail, um, now you undoes the knot and just sort of lets the rope go. And so you... it flies up through the pulley, slaps around two or three times in the anchor uh, rope. Uh, just kind of gets sucked off the winch and down into the into the drink. Splash! Yeah. Uh, as uh, a little bit of sea mist uh, wafts onto this little portion of the boat. Uh, and some of the revelers, uh, misted by the, the ocean spray. Yay! Uh, as Nail has unanchored the boat, and you can feel it bobbing, maybe just a little bit more. Up next, Everard, you're looking for some food. Tell me about that. Um, well, I think I would feel like the big barrels of salt water and fish that they're throwing into the thing is too heavy for me to carry. So I'm just going to scrounge together what I can out of the party supplies. All right. Uh, <clears throat> and and Nayo, uh, having accomplished his mission, rushes over to help Everard. Yeah. All right. Uh, then I would like you both to roll a perception or investigation check. Uh, and we'll take the higher of the two rolls. I'll say if you beat, if you beat, don't stop. It's a twenty. <laughs> that twenty. So whatever, whatever, whatever in that <clears throat> twenty gets me. Are you, well, <laughs> let's just if it's double nat twenty, something special will happen. Bonus dead. <laughs> oh, good lord. No. <laughs> okay. Nat twenty is still fantastic. Yep, uh, so as um <laughs> someone someone enhance enhance zoom in computer enhance uh uh Niel, as as you have completed your task and you slip off to help everard uh you actually find that everard is uh cracking open uh pushing a drunk pirate off of a crate cracking it open and inside are uh several bottles of Mava's Reserve, uh, a potent, rare alcohol favored by Mava Bart, the Pirate Queen herself, uh, and stacked on top of that to keep it nice and cool are a bunch of bundles of uh, Kukanana fruit. Uh, sort of a blend, an exotic fruit that is much prized across the Beast Wilds, a blend of a cucumber and a banana. So, it keeps things nice and cool, hydrated, refreshing. This is a rare treat, uh, something that Nail would probably have eaten uh, somewhat regularly, but uh, hard road and iron rations, this is not. This is the good stuff. Uh, and I will call that two units of rations. All right, 
Hell yeah. As Everard and Niel, Niel has shown up just in, in time to help Everard shimmy this crate off the side and lower it down onto the, the awaiting fairy raft. Uh, oh, Apollo, I, I put you in the wrong order. Uh, Apollo. Oh, darn. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> Apollo oh, no. uh, is, as everyone else has, is making their way, uh, Glemma and Knock Knock uh, have, have each holding a barrel of fish oil, lower themselves down onto the ferry as quietly as they can. Everyone else uh, wrapping up their business as Apollo, with the hot lamp, approaches the engine. There are uh, two uh, burly pirates, uh, a half-orc and, uh, um, and a dwarf, uh, who are sort of taking turns to shovel more fish into the engine as you approach Apollo. I'm assuming if they're, they're shoveling, um, they haven't so much been part of the party at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, they they have not. Uh, there's a lot of mist kicking up, a lot of steam. Um, so while they're not participating in the party, uh, they are sort of uh, in their own little world, a little distracted. Uh, but they have not been drinking. They are. They, they've been working hard though. They look like they're pretty tired. Hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I guess at this point, um, Apollo's not the most charismatic, so I don't think he's going to be able to talk his way out of this. How big is the opening that you said? I mean, if they're actively shoveling into it, it's got to be just left open at this point, right? It's, it's big enough that two people could probably jump headfirst into it at the same time and not knock shoulders. Okay, and this this hot lamp that I have, I mean, are we talking like basketball or like a, I mean, like a cantaloupe size? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> this can only go well. <laughs> okay. Um, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm, I need to engage this hot lamp in whatever capacity that takes. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to load it into this newly found blunder bow that I have and just launch this thing into the furnace and run like hell. Okay. Uh, will you be right sizing the blunder bow then? <clears throat> well, that's what I, I'm kind of contemplating at this point um, is the size of this thing. Would that be necessary or could I, I mean, cause I'm in the room. It's not like I'm trying to send it very far. I think and you I don't could need to be especially accurate if it's that large of an opening. No, you really don't. Uh, okay. Um, uh, as as the blunder bow is shrunken, I don't think that it would be able to successfully fling the hot lamp. Okay. Uh, but it's it's up to you if you want to just try to free arm it, just baseball it. All right, then I think that'll be the play, or we'll just try and. Give it a throw and hope for the best. Yeah, there is a, a there's a little there's a big splash off the side, uh, a, an ocean spray. Some of that hits the chimney stack and the hot metal. It sizzles and it kicks up all this mist. And the two figures who are shoveling fish into this engine to produce fish oil for the pirates are just completely obscured. They can't even see out of this. And Apollo, you knock on the hot lamp and one of those two remaining glowing <clears throat> gem studs starts to wink and you see a light brighten and you feel it powering up uh, it's starting to scald the skin of your palm as you <laughs> chuck it through the mist rolling into the furnace uh, and from deep within a cloud of fishy mist, you see a light begin to grow and grow until after just blinking a couple of times, 
you even start to see the metal of the furnace glow red hot. The mist from that furnace starts to get even more expansive, covering even more of the boat. And you hear, choo-choo, 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 as kakong, kakong. The wheels on the side begin to rotate and water begins to lap and splash. Uh, what does Apollo do in this moment? Um, I think, I think he would just kind of uh, casually call out to the two guys that were actively feeding this thing. Um, just be like, hey, they just broke open a new barrel of grog. They're, uh, you know, you better get it while you can as he makes his own way out, kind of leading by example. If they leave, they leave. If not, he just needs to get the hell away from this thing before it all goes south. Uh, with that shout, you see two shadowy figures kind of push through the smoke, wiping all of this briny sweat from their bodies. Hey, new grog! Ah! They run off into the party as you make your way uh, over the ship, leaping over drunken sailors, uh, avoiding the ones that are still conscious. Uh, and you slip down ever so quietly onto the ferry raft. Uh, Catalina, uh, you have been distracting the captain and the scrivener, uh, as you, uh, pose a question so fraught ideologically that the two of them turn on each other and begin to quarrel. You slip away, you join up with Ace, and you make your way down onto the ferry. As all of you have now secreted away with the magic items that you have, uh, uh, been awarded as party favors or stolen, uh, you are able to load all of the food, all of the light, and everything else that you've pilfered thus far onto the wagon. The knots are easy enough to untie, and uh, I think we'll leave it there for this session. Uh, as as our friends uh, of the this final postman team is uh, making ready to shove off uh, and the, the wheels of the salty squirter engage to draw it out into the dark ocean unbeknownst to anyone. So, uh, what we need to do now is to roll our travel die. Uh, I'm gonna say this was a pretty easy one not a lot of problems uh and you didn't stay long so let's roll a d4 uh and uh since bonus dad rolled for the last one we're going to have ace roll this one ace roll me a d4 and tell us how many days we've lost at sea that would be a two a two two more days mark it down i believe we're up to eight days elapsed currently as our postman team makes ready to steal away from the pirates. Okay, everyone, if you wouldn't mind, please reintroducing yourselves for the folks at home as we sign off for tonight. Uh, we are gonna go in reverse order this time with Pixel. Pixel, tell us who you were, who you played, and if you'd like to be found on the internet. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Pixel. I played Everard Elder Tinkle, Shadow Sorcerer, and uh, Forger of Heartbreaking Documents, as well as, um, you know, Thief, uh, and very likely Murderer of a Huge Ship Full of People. Um, that's fake Captain. The epithets keep growing. Um, you can find me uh, here on twitch.tv slash hsvinor, where I run our other campaign that will be happening this Friday, Curse of Strahd. Um, and we have some new things in the work as well. We have a sci-fi game probably starting in the beginning of the year. Um, and our Curse of Strahd game is probably going to have to go on hiatus after a while in January. We have one or two more episodes of that left before that happens. It won't be fully finished, so we'll try to pick it up back again, but there's a scheduling conflict with one of the players. So anyway, not to go into all that detail now, but 
only that is to say, I will be looking for other new players for... I'm thinking I might run Tomb of Annihilation, but I'm not 100% sure um, in place of that campaign. So, um, that all having been said, you can also find me here at twitch.tv slash Hammer and Pixel, where I've been playing a lot of Baldur's Gate 3 and Stardew Valley, and that's been a good time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Pixel. Up next, Synovia. Tell us who you were, who you played, and if you'd like to be found on the internet. Sorry about that. I had a hammer in my room that somebody needed. Um, uh, I'm Synovia. I played Catalina today, and you can find me on TikTok at Final Final. Wonderful. Go check her out if you love Star Wars. Uh, up next, Ace, tell us who you were, who you played, and if you'd like to be found on the internet. Yeah, I'm Ace. Uh, tonight I was Apollo. Um, I can usually be found in the Bonus Bombs Tavern Discord, usually running or playing in some kind of d and I'm on a bit of a hiatus right now. Uh, just was running a ton of games, but hoping to get back into it, probably after the holidays when people's schedules kind of normalize a little bit, and uh, hopefully get to get some new people in some games. Wonderful. Uh, very much appreciated, Ace, for running games. That's It's a tough thing, speaking from experience. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, Bonus Dad. Who are you? I am play? bonus bonus dad. I played Nail, uh, high elf rogue, and um, uh, as far as internet, uh, bonus mom uh, does a live stream every morning, uh, weekdays, Monday through Friday, usually uh, from about nine o'clock Eastern to about eleven plus, and I usually come in about ten thirty or so and uh, uh, sing a song or two, uh, read some, share some poetry read an Uncle Wiggly story, children's story for all ages. And uh, some of that you can find on YouTube under Bonus Mom. Uh, you can also find us on uh, Bonus Mom's Tavern on podcast. And uh, so that's it. That's it. Yeah, we, we have a great time. We have a community on TikTok called Community of the Heart. And it, it is on Bonus Mom 70, under Bonus Mom 70. So uh, come and join us. Love to have you. Come join the bonus fam, folks. Yep. yep. I am Beast. Uh, I am I am your bonus buddy, your bonus friend, your bonus bro. Uh, and I have been the dungeon master for tonight's session, and hopefully for all every session in this campaign after that. Who knows? Uh, freaky things have happened before, and I'm sure they'll happen again. But you won't know unless you tune in next time for episode four, as we pick up where we left off. Uh, with the scuppering of the salty squirter and the uh, pirating of pirate goods by our misfit postman. Uh, we'll see you all soon. Take care, everyone. Bye, everybody. And I don't know, I never know how to end these. Goodbye. <laughs>